that's our fourth day of conference. We're back to a normal schedule today. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce as our first speaker, Tom Lin from Georgia Tech, who talks about parts of matrix work. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> um, thank you all for being here, and thank you to the organizers for the invitation. I hope every word in the title makes sense to all of you. Um, but um, I will talk about certain paths in matrix, and that is actually turned out to be a path to how we find our representations. Um, so let me start with, with um, something that some of you may have already seen. So let's say a matrix is um, regular. You may want to say it is represented by some unimodular matrices, but let's say if uh, it is representable over all fields. This is a very interesting class of matrix that includes, for instance, all graphical things. And um, yes, um, so there is a excluding minor theorem for the regular matrix that is um, kind of proved at the same time of the invention of the notion of matrix. So the theorem says a matrix is regular if and only if it has no U24 final or dual final minors. So this theorem was first proved by Tass in uh, 1958, and people at the time were not satisfied with this proof because it was pretty complicated and uh, it's, it's not that uh, elementary as before were things. And then Todd had a lecture notes um, still trying to illustrate this idea of, of this regular matrix, but later on, there are more proofs. For instance, we have uh, Stimos proof, this was in uh, 1979. And a modern proof or elementary proof or textbook proof that is still by um, Piras. In 1989. And this, yes. Is it easy to say the definition of a minor? Uh, yes, yeah, so if you are familiar with graph minors, this is kind of the generation of, of the graphical uh, minors. And uh, you can try to delete or contract some edges which correspond to the elements in the matrix, and that gives you the minor. And one thing that is good about minors is that if, if your matrix is regular, then all of these minors must be regular as well. And if your matrix is representable over some field, your minor must be representable at, at that same field. Any other questions? Okay. So since the publication of the later proofs, original path proof is largely forgotten. And, um, but um, recently, um, my advisor, Mike Baker and Oliver, Lorshai found out that the idea inside this um, path proof is actually one of the key ingredients to the, to the many good properties of the notion of foundations. And um, let me give you a brief review of pass idea. And this is where we will say pass in a matrix. So let's consider first the example of a U to six matrix. And uh, let's say let's represent it by matrices over some fields. And this is quite standard that um, we have a rank two, um, two by six matrix, let's say one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six. And uh, we want all of the two by two manners to be non-singular. That means I want the field has characteristic not equal to two or three. I have five. We cannot have five, okay. 
And um, now, instead of this very standard matrix of vision, I want to use a different idea that is by the circuits or the hyperplane factors. So for instance, in this matrix, we have a circuit one, two, three. If one, two, three is a circuit, that means the corresponding columns are linearly dependent. And it is a very basic linear algebra exercise to find out the coefficients to, to give the linear dependence among the three vectors. And you can do it by operations. Um, we can put one minus two, one, and uh, is that correct? Okay. Then zero, zero, zero for the remaining columns. And you can also do more, for instance, for the circuit one, two, five. That gives you the Boolean circuit vector, which is three minus four, zero, zero, one, zero. Let's do one more, um, the circuit of one, three, five. It also gives you another circuit vector. And that will be one, O oh, minus two, Oh, one, oh. So, so far it's quite um, simple, I hope. But there's one nice property among those three circuits is that those three circuits represent the linear dependence or a circuit, but we are also able to write linear dependence among those linear dependence. For instance, if you write on the first circuit and multiply it by minus two, and then plus the second circuit vector by positive one, and then plus the last circuit by minus one. Uh, for instance, let's do a very, let's look at the fifth coordinate. If you have minus one plus one, and that gives you zero. So this is a zero vector. Now the first idea of plus is that you can do this for all matrices, for all realizable matrices. Um, so, for instance, let's say what is important or what is um, special about the circuits here. For instance, we know that the run function applied at the first circuit 1 to 3 plus the rank of 1 to 5. This is equal to the rank of 1 2, which is the intersection of two circuits plus rank of 1 2 3 5, which is a union. So that means actually the first two circuits. Uh, satisfies the modularity with equalities. And in this case, we say that the two circuits form a modular pair. And you may also have a notion of modular triple, which means in those three circuits, you have pairwise modularities um, defined by the equality of the sub modularity. Now, the first idea of plot is that. Now you have the very classical row space representations. So those representations by row spaces is equivalent to giving a set of circuit vectors. Plus the properties um, as in this example. So that means plus the linear dependence um, among the modular triples. So this idea of new rotations is generalized by Dresden and so. in 1992, and they actually did it for evaluating matrix. The matrix with some valuations on that. Sorry, so it's a modular triplet. Three elements where every pair of the triplets are Yes, exactly. So for instance, the three circuits here are modular triple because you have some modularities, the quantities here and here, and um, the first and the last. If you verify that, but since it's uniform, it's pretty straightforward. So, sorry, could you say that again? Okay, uh, I'm writing down here um, modular triples. 
and that's good to know. Uh, but the triple loss means. Um, pairwise modular pair. So pick any two circuits in your triple and uh, you have the modular pair as, uh, as equality. Any, any further questions? I'm confused about the, it's, so if I give you the circuit vectors, can't you recover the row space? Yes, exactly. That is uh, the other direction of this theorem or this idea. So this is kind of a um, bijective thing. And you can also do it for or pastures. That is, that is a different um, setup. You have no matrices, but you can, you can do it. And actually, there are more good prisms for ideas. So you can view it as, as a circuit axiom for um, matrix with coefficients. And uh, this matrix approach is kind of a basis axiom for matrix with coefficients. Oh, sorry, can I maybe double dab on Matt's question? What do, by circuit vectors, do you mean the literal vectors or do you mean them as side vectors? Or I mean this actual vector. But then you're giving me the current matrix so, so I know what the, the matrix is. Um, how to run. I mean, but then I know what the matrix is. What the representation is. Yes, you know the matrix. If you have a circuit vector, you know the matrix. Why do I need the linear dependence? Why do I need the modular? Why, why are modular triples relevant? Because I well, not only the matrix, but the matrix with a certain representation. So you want the literal matrix, not the matrix up to row, row, row operations? Oh, I, I will introduce the, some row operations and column operations later on. So that will appear later. And uh, I haven't modulo any equivalence classes yet. I will do that later on, and uh, maybe just in one minute. The, the point is that if you don't start with the matrix, but you just write down some circuit vectors, and then you want to reconstruct a matrix, the necessary and sufficient condition for that to happen is that each modular triple has a linear dependent. And when that is true, there will be a matrix that gives for us. So I will do the equivalent thing um, here very soon. So, so do I understand correctly that it's not so important what is this linear dependence because of that we can read from the uh, vectors, but the fact yes. that it exists. And yes, you know yes, what exactly. It is. yes, exactly. Yes, um, because so far I haven't done any equivalence, but if you do some row operations or column operations, you have to change the coefficient slightly. But uh, this change of coefficients will depend on how you do the operations. So that, that will that will here here. And um, okay, let me finish this one. Uh, and uh, it is also possible to do it for all matrices. Okay. Uh, now let's have an extra path. Um, this is the second ideal path. And this is also called a path theorem of matrix. If M and the contraction of M, which is one minor of M, is the contraction with some elements A are connected, which is pretty important in, in this setup. And if we have two circuits, X and Y, both containing this, this element A, then we are able to find a pass of circuits Satisfying some conditions coming from the modular pairs and modular tables. So let's say I have a path starting from X, let's start say no, and then say one, up to say K, which is equal to Y, such that every circuit in the middle must contain the element A and uh, the consecutive circuits form a modular pair.
And finally, the intersection of the two circuits contains not only the element A, but something else. So intersection has side at least two. And in particular, let's do the rescaling or robot resonance here. For instance, um, let me write a, um, maybe a circuit in that matrix. If we start with one, two, three, and we want to go from one, two, three to the circuit, for instance, uh, one, five, six. So one way of doing it is just move from one, two, three to one, two, five, which appears in that example, the circuit one, two, five, one, now you say that you have the element one in common and the intersection has two elements. And from one, two, five, you can directly go from one, two, five to one, five, six by the similar reasons. And uh, if you look at the corresponding circuit vectors for one, two, three, for instance, let's call it, uh, say, now, say, one, and say, two. If we look at the cross ratio or the quotient, um, not yet cross ratio, let's look at the quotient of, say, now as a circuit vector at one times, say, one of the circuit function at two over, say now at two, say one at one. And now it, let's do the operations here. If you, for instance, um, and in row operations. Wait, can you explain what that notation is? Okay, yes. What is C1 at one? C1 is the, C, C now at one is the um, first entry of the vector, um, circuit vector corresponding to C now. And C now is a circuit one, two, three. Uh, you can write it say one two three at one. That is um, very many uh, variables. So say now at one is in this case just one, and say now at two is minus two. Say one at one is three. Say one at two is minus four. Does that make sense? Any further questions? If we do the row operations. We do not change the, anything among columns. Um, and you can, you can actually stay um, for, for every um, entry in the circuit vector. But if we, for instance, we scale some column by some non zero scalars, we have to change the corresponding column in the circuit vectors. But for the same scalar that is corresponding to how you, exchange, how you change the, col uh, the columns here. But um, the ratio here, because both bottom, top and bottom contains the same number of ones, the same number of twos, we know that this, this ratio does not depend on the operations or the column operations. And that is why uh, this is kind of a invariant uh, under your either toric action or the uh, change among um, the you, you, you do, do not change the row, um, row spaces. So let's denote this ratio um, by the notation, say none, say one, and the elements one, two. And this is what we call a cross ratio. <laughs> Corresponding to the module here, say none, say one, and elements one and two. Now, what is the connection between the path here and the foundation? It is a theorem of Matt and Oliver that if you have, if you know all of these cross ratios, say one, say two, x and y, which is, well, if you evaluate those circuit vectors, you have some element in your field or pasture F, those cross ratios will uniquely determine the uh, rep representation quotient by this column scaling. It determines uh, 
representation modular rescaling of columns. Precise. And you have to put conditions on C one C two. That is, uh, you have modular pairs among C one C two, and you have two distinct elements in the in their intersection, where C one C two is a modular pair, and X and Y are distinct elements in their intersection. And in other words, that actually means that the foundation of the matrix is generated. By those cross ratios. Yes. What happens if a circuit has more than two elements in common? Yes, that is a great question because you may choose different elements to form your cross ratio. I have you collect all of those. And uh, there are relations among different ways you choose the two elements. And actually, that gives you, um, I may or may not mention that in the, in the next. Um, plus, but um, yes, they, they happen. They, that is possible. C1, C2 can be replaced by C, I, C, J, or any. Yes, yes. You just collect all of the modular pairs and you collect all of the elements in their intersection, distinct elements. And it is also, okay, let me maybe. Oh, okay, I, I will not do that. Okay. Um, now, where, where are the minors? We only say cross ratio, do not say any minors. But in the non degenerate case, meaning that you can, well, you know, X is in the intersection of X, C1, C2. So that means you can do some, say, circuit eliminations, you get another circuit. There's something else, then you can do another circuit elimination, you get another circuit. In the non degenerate case, every cross ratio actually gives us a U2 for minor. And you can also reformulate this theorem by saying that. Um, the reputations as U2 for minors uniquely determine the very big reputation of your ground matrix. And by the way, this U2 for minor is also excluded for the binary matrix. What does it mean for this cross ratio to give you? I'm sorry. What does it mean for this cross ratio to give you? A... Okay. Yes. Um. If you let's do the example here. Let's. It's very easy. Do that. Um. Now we have one, two, three, one, two, five. Then our example here. Have one, two, three as a circuit. Have one, two, five as a circuit. And your elements in common are one and two. And by eliminating, eliminating one, you get a third circuit, which is two, three, five. By eliminating two, you get one, three, five. And inside the U2 for minor one, two, three, five, you have three, you have four circuits, and that is already your, your U2 for minor. Four, this is the same thing as M restricted on one, two, three, five. How we can assume that these three and five are non parallel? Um, can you repeat your question? How you assume that how we can assume that three and five is non circuit? Uh, three and five are elements. I mean, the, if we consider the two elements set. Which two elements set? Consist by of the three and five. Oh, okay. That is a non degenerate case. We are only considering non degenerate case case here. So that means the the two circuits we obtained here are actually distinct circuits inside the original matrix. But if you have degenerate case, then every cross ratio automatically by definition is minus one. And um, well, you, you can put extra conditions, but uh, I would prefer we only consider the non degenerate case. So, so if you have a regular matrix, there there aren't any cross ratios. Is that if you have if I have a regular matrix, I it is possible that I have cross ratios. And uh, we may put conditions, uh, we, may, we have to put more conditions among those cross ratios. And it is possible that there's no way to assign each cross ratio some element in your field that satisfies those relations, and that gives no limitations at all. So there, there will be 
um, some relations among cross ratio that may um, exclude the possibility of having a resonator. I think, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think what Graham was asking if all cross ratios are trivial, and that follows from what you said. So, this is true for binary matrix, so for regular matrix, or cross ratios are all equal to one. Uh, let's maybe also answer the question of, um, well, in Mario's talk, I remember someone asked why, why if there's no useful manner, then something is only a point, and that is actually where the useful manners appear. Those are the non-trivial <laughs> cross ratios. Yes, non-trivial cross ratios. Got it. A binary matrix can have a non-trivial ratio. Really? No. Binaries do not have useful manners, so there is no non-trivial cross ratio. How does that? And how does that not contradict this theorem, though? Uh, which theorem? I mean, the one you put in there. If the, if the cross ratio is determined, the representation. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is determining? Sorry, if there's if there's no information in the cross ratios. Um, can you repeat your question, please? I, I mean, if you're saying that in the binary for a binary matrix, right, the cross ratios are all one. How? Are are minus one? Um. Okay. If I have no cross ratios, there's so here it really means there's only one way of assigning each, each um, say trivial or non-trivial cost ratios. And for trivial ones, you only have to send it to minus one. And because it is, you know, at every cross ratio, it goes to minus one. And you know that it's uniquely determined replications. That means you have only one replication, or, or at most one, because it is possible that um, you do not have any possible ways to. Oh, is this with the data of knowing the, the circuits as well? Or what what data do I know? Do I just know do I know there are circuits like C1 through C seven and these are the, the cross ratio numbers, or do I know the circuits? Do I know the matroid? But you have to know the matroid. You want to find out the conditions of the matroid. You have you have already a underlying matroid here, you know the circuits where they are, and you know the but relations of the circuits. It's a set, or are you or are you giving me the circuits? Uh, which which one the circuits just the subsets of the grants? Uh, you know the matroid, you know everything, you know every commentary information on the matroid. So this symbol here, you can think of as like a functor that for any field or even more generally pasture, if you, that symbol will give you some element of that thing. And so if you have a representation, then you get a bunch of numbers and there will be, if it's binary, there's at most one choice, so there's at most one representation. And then if you want to know whether there actually is a representation, you have to do something else, which you might or might. It might be helpful if you remind us what's the meaning of the expression generated by. Okay. Um, yes. But the foundation of a matrix is kind of um, a sum f1 plus minus algebra. That means you have to uh, join your original regular partial field with some symbols. And actually, every symbol corresponds to one cross ratio. And now, if you have no beautiful minor, that means you have no non trivial cross ratios. But if you have only trivial cross ratios, that means you can only assign every cross ratio to the to the element minus one. So that means you have only one map from your uh, foundation to to your target field of pasture. That means you have only at most one representation over every field of pasture. Um, that okay, or is that a satisfactory explanation to? Um, anyone who have questions? Now, let me maybe briefly mention uh, the relations among the cross ratios. So we have a pass here. We may also um, have a pass. Here we have a uh, So we have multiple ways to go from one circuit to another circuit. We say one pass, one to three, one to five, and then one, five, six. 
you may want a different path. For instance, you may want to go from one to three to one to four. And then maybe one, four, six. And then go from one, four, six to one, five, six. And you have to check if, if the ways going from one to three to one, five, six, the ways of your choice of paths, if they give the same repetition uh, in the end for the circuit one, five, six. And the theorem says that if you have a longer cycle in your graph here, then you are able to decompose this very large cycle, not, not large so yet, but you are able to decompose this large cycle into smaller elementary cycles. And in this case, we do one, two, three, one, two, five, one, two, four. We are able to decompose into a triangle in the, sec in the graph. And then you are also able to do, for instance, uh, one, two, four, one, two, five, one, two, four, six. And then you have another three cycle here in the end. And the theorem says you can actually decompose. into small cycles and every cycle actually corresponds to some small minor of the matroid on at most seven elements. And every small cycle corresponds to a small minor of man. Most seven elements. And in particular, those small elementary minors contain the final minor and the dual final minor. And there are a few more regular cases and some minors that contain the u for minor. And that is actually how we have the relations among the cross ratios and uh, why, why we do have the x minors as in the original list. Why can you have one, two, five, one, four, six? Uh, yes, yeah, there are multiple ways to to decompose it. I, I was not saying that there's a unique way of decomposing. I guess we are worried that they don't have two elements in common. Yeah, you want one for five, maybe to make something work. Uh, one, one, two, five, one, four. This is a valid decomposition. Which two? We thought that to have an edge, you have to have two elements. Oh, Yes, I say, I say. Okay, maybe let's do it. Uh, one, four, five, change one, four, six to one, four, five. But then it doesn't work. Well, first, one's fine. Let's see how I can decompose it. Um, let's say, what if I. Let me look at my notes. Could be some ways to decompose it. We need to type some reason for it. One, six. Oh, yeah. Here still. Uh, okay, I clicked some edge here. There was a suggestion to change that six to a five, bottom right here. Okay. Isolate. But is, is it the I mean, same about any cycle? Yeah, it says it's kind of cheating this example. So. Yes, um, <laughs> because the reason is that we may we may have to go to a different circuit, not already in the cycle yet. Uh, maybe this is not a good example to do the do the decomposition within the already known circuits. So you may want to, yeah, and you are allowed to use different circuits, different the ones from the ones in, already in the cycle. So let's let's. Uh, for instance, let's still with six, but you can do another one, four, five here. And this is uh, still allowed. And then you may connect things like this and, uh, and this. And you're also allowed to connect like this, and you can decompose it later on. The point is that this is not obvious, right? <laughs> this is a hard theorem of time. It's not so easy to figure out how to do these decompositions. But is it? <laughs> The minor is the unit of the around one triangle or square. Yes, for instance, in this triangle, you have a U2 file minor. And that appears in, in the list here. And why seven elements then? Yes, because it is possible that you have to decompose it into a cycle that corresponds to a final or dual final minor. 
But here we do not see it because it is just U to six. Oh, so that's what a small cycle is. It's a cycle where the binder. Uh, cycle here means uh, a class of circuits where your first circuit say now is equal to the last circuit say k. And the union of all the bits has size at most seven? Yes, right. Good. Yeah. So it's not triangle or square. Triangle or square that is not. But but triangle or square that is small. Yes, right. So that, Yes, exactly. Um, not only small in the in the sense of the ground side, but also in the rank sense. So you like okay, that that is it. Um, yes. So you have small cycles corresponding to small minors of the matroid. Okay. Uh, now finally, let me. I can finally go into the ensemble case, which is my main purpose. And this, I hope today we will see a lot of those. Generation of matrix um, for the next two talks. Now, when we look at what we call the ensemble matrix, if, if you like Kaufner matrix, those are of at BN. If you like data matrix, those are even data matrix. And for the shear, those are tight multi matrix where for every number you have only two colors. Um, and um, yeah, so it's kind of an intersection of, of the theory of multi matrix and the cluster matrix. But if you've never heard of any words before, let me give you a very concrete example. Um, they come from, in the realizable case, come from the skew symmetric matrices. But we are not able to just look at the skew symmetric matrices, but we come. Combine it with some, um, combine it with a identity matrix, and let's look at a render case: zero, 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 one, 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 maybe minus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Minus one. So this will be denoted I n I four together with the matrix A. If you do the computations correctly, you will say that all of the principal sub matrices of A with even cardinality, those are either plus or minus one. And if you do the principal sub matrices at some odd cardinality sub matrices, you have zero. And that gives you some combinatorial structure on the, on the subset of one through n. And in this case, if we collect all of the subsets of one through four, one through four, where you have a non-zero determinant, then you have of course on this side one two three four, and all of the two element subsets. Um, that is already a one example of an ensemble matrix where the ground set is one through four and the bases are here, and this ensemble matrix is. Um, Denoted M4, which is kind of a uniform version of the ensemble matrix because you achieve all of the possible bases. Although, for the purpose of circuits, we may want to have different colors as in Shiri's example because, for instance, here we do have eight columns, which means that one, two, three, four, and uh, one star, two stars, three star, four star. You may view it as two different colors of the elements one through four. And to go from subsets of one through four, we can actually also complete it into a four element subset by adding the missing numbers with a different color of with, with a star here. So empty set becomes one star, two star, three star, and four star. One, two, three, four is already a four element subset. The basis one, two becomes one, two, three star, four star. And you can see how you may do the remaining uh, operations. And why this is a generation of matrix? Because, um, for instance, if you have a U24 minor, U24 matrix, it is always possible to make it a ensemble matrix by some operation called lifting where you put every basis in, 
you to four, for instance, one, two, you send it to one, two, three star, four star. So that gives you an ensemble matrix in, in the second sense. Um, now, let me give you the formal definition of the ensemble matrix. So our cross set will be N union N star, as in the original case, as in the example. And we say a subset in the cross set, for instance, I, I star, you have a, you have all of the colors here. You have the two colors here. This is called a skew here for the element I. And a few more notions. If a subset T of the cross set has exactly cardinality N, and if this set T does not have any skew pairs, this is called a transversal. And we call the subsets of transversals call them the admissible subsets. Now, an ensemble matrix in the combinatorial definition is a collection of, it's a pair. Of the cross set. Okay, so. And some subsets of the transversals, denoted by curly B. Here. B is not empty. It's a collection of some transversals. Such that you may imagine we want to do the basis to change axiom, such that if we have two transversals, two bases, uh, B1, B2, and if we have a skew pair in the symmetric difference, let's say x, x star, in the symmetric difference of b1, b2, then we can find a different skew pair, y and y star. And still inside uh, this symmetric difference, <coughs> So if we do the basic change with um, those two two pairs, we get a different a new basis. And you can also prove that if you want the symmetric change, I mean that from um, B2 symmetric difference with the four elements, it is also a basis. It is possible to choose uh, a better choice of new skew pairs. <laughs> so many of the classical commentarial theory about the orthogonal matrix actually they only focus on the admissible part of the orthogonal matrix. But now I want to convince you that we if we want some actual new theorems of a subtle matrix, we do need to go from the admissible part to the non-admissible part. So for instance, um, there are some known theories. From the basis, we have 
um, there are quantomorphisms of independent sets. And you may guess that those are exactly the subsets of a basis. Uh, that is pretty well um, intuitive. And from independent sets, you can say with what are the what the dependent sets are, those are admissible and minimally uh, within that party. So minimally dependent sets and admissible. Sets are hot circuits. And they are also circuit axiom for subnormal matrix. Those are um, very um, classical results. And for instance, the circuit side of that M4 example are precisely the one star, two, three, four, one, two star, three, four, and by symmetry, you know, there are two more of them. And one star, two star, two star, and four. One star, two star, three, and four star, and um, we are together eight of them by the symmetry of the quotient. If your ensemble matrix is from a matrix, if it is a lift of some matrix, then the circuit says it's precisely the circuit of your matrix M. Union, this part is pretty interesting. It's union the co circuits, but with a star version of, of everything. So, co circuit star of your original matrix. And this actually will cause many trouble uh, to the past. Okay. Um, now, say what's next. Now, I will tell you something knew about how we may go from a domestic process to non domestic process. So you saw from previous talk that we are able to find rank function now in the domestic process. And in the subtle case, the rank function is pretty straightforward, and still it is pretty much what you would expect. Now, if A is admissible, then we can say the rank of it to be the maximum of the kinetic of, of some independent set inside A. So I inside A, I is independent. Now, the Good thing about a subtle matrix is that as a model matrix is tight, which means we are able to give a pretty nice um, rank function extended to the non admissible sets. So let's say if A, some admissible A now, union, a union of two pairs, say X union X star, where A now is admissible. And now let's define the rank function of A. To be a rank of the admissible part A now plus the kinetic of, of X. And actually, it is good because if you do this thing, you can always find out. So if, if you find some independent, maximum independent inside A now, then you can find a basis containing A now and containing this um, say A. Yes, here it is. And what is this a good notion of rank function? It is because we may extend the similarity to the non admissible part. So now if A and B is admissible, but we do not require anything on the union of A and B, then the rank of A plus the rank of B is at least the rank of A intersect B, which is still admissible plus the rank of A union B. And in particular, we do want some modularities among circuits. And if we take two circuits, it is possible that union is not admissible. And this gives us a way to define the modular pairs and modular field triples of circuits. Now let's say, um, say, say one, say two, inside a circle matrix. 
is a modular here. And we have a properties. And you can also prove that it is equivalent to things that they come from, they are the fundamental circuits of a same basis. Okay. Of a same basis. Is that true in the matrix setting? Uh yes. Yes. Um it is. Yes, it is helpful, yes. Uh, that is why I wanted it. Uh, okay. No, oh, yes. Is it for arbitrary set? I mean, if A, B is. A, B are admissible. And A union B may not be admissible. But for circuits, it is always true. <clears throat> now, remember the first idea of Todd is to give a um, circuit vector version of representations. Uh, over fields, over pastures, whatever. And this is possible in the orthogonal case. This is by um, a joint work with Song Kim, who is going to talk at, at noon. Uh, that around a circle matrix, and this type of representation by, by matrices. This is equivalent to do the representations by some circuit vectors plus the linear dependence on the modular triples and modular quadruples. Questions. Yes. So for an orthogonal matroid, being representable just means that there exists a skew symmetric matrix such that. Yes. So does, uh, that, does that imply that the characteristic can't be two or? In this bad? case, it is. Um, in, in this M4 example, this M4 is regular. It means they don't care about the um, characteristic of the field. But uh, in general, you, the, the characteristic really matters um, because in general, you want really a maximum isotropic subspaces, and you want to encode that space with some um, bilinear form, and you too want something about the characteristic of the field. That is, that is true, but um, this example is good. That is the reason I put the example here, because, well, I everything is either one or minus one or, or zero. I have to questions like over characteristic two, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's, you can still have skew symmetric matrices. They're just, yes. They happen to also be symmetric. Yes, yes, but uh, that's, fine. that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so at, for now, we cannot do any um, rescaling of columns, but it's also possible that it is also true modulo uh, rescaling of columns and rows. Because you do want to maintain this skew symmetric uh, property of the matrix. And from here, you can actually find out the foundation of the solar matrix that is, satisfies the universal property that um, Zach mentioned on Monday. But the problem here is we know very little about the structure of the foundation, which means we do not know the, at, at least for now, we do not know what the generators relations are. And that is um, where I want to discuss a path in the orthogonal matrix.
So um, there will be a very naive guess because at least for now we have every ingredients ready in the PAS theorem. We know when a salt matrix are connected. We also know when they form a modular pair. And it's, the remaining things are kind of naive when, when having those two circuits. But we cannot do this um, immediately because of this, this example. So let's consider the orthogonal matroid of five elements, which is four union or star, unions of extra elements A and A star. And let's consider the orthogonal matroid defined by the circuit set, where you have one, two, three, A, one, two, four, A, one, uh, two, four, one, three, four, A. Two, three, four, eight. And also one star, two stars, three star, eight. And some four more. There are four of this form. And one, two, three, four. One star, two stars, three star, four star. And a few more circuits containing a star. So the problem is in this orthogonal matrix, if you do want to pass from the circuit one, two, three, A to your circuit um, one star, two star, three star, A, there is no way of finding such paths where uh, the consecutive circuit has at least two elements in the in the in the middle in the intersection. Now, what is the problem? The problem is we have this connectivity is, is really bad in the orthogonal case. This is because the uh, problem is in this orthogonal matrix, M doing contracting with A is isomorphic to the length of into four. And every circuit in the U24, as we say, is, is actually partitioned into um, two disjoint sets. Four and four star. The circuits are actually separated um, into four different union with four star, meaning that every circuit is in exactly one of them. Although this this little U four is connected in the matrix sense and the solid matrix sense. Now um, that means we want to change some notion of connectivity in the orthogonal case. And um, let's see. Now, let's put these conditions further together with the connectivity. Let's say orthogonal matrix M is irreducible. It is first connected, and we see that there's no circuit separators. Circuits are not separated, and um, this is actually the second part. Combining with connectivity is actually means that it is not the length of matrix. Now, why is this a, also a very nice definition of connectivity or irreducibility? Because it also um, preserves once you take minors, which means if your matrix, a matrix M is reducible, then you are able to find some element in the ground set. And by taking contraction, you have another irreducible um, orthogonal matrix. So that means in the orthogonal case, Yes. Of mind, can you wind up in the next? Yes. Um, maybe here, just just um, three more minutes or five more minutes. Okay. Uh, let's do the okay. a song now. 
fast conjecture is that if we replace the connectivity by reusability, and we have the same assumptions on the circuits, and if we are able to find out a path satisfying the properties one through, one, through four, one through three, then we are actually able to find out the generators of the foundations of the assault matrix. And in particular, those generators again comes from the small manners of an assault matrix, two of them being regular, and this is one of them, and two of them being actually the extra manners of the binary assault matrix, uh, which is already studied by um, Boucher and uh, Duchamp and um, other authors. Okay, um, let me just stop here. Yes, thank you very much. Um, other questions? Is, is this related to the polytope being full dimensional? Uh, which, okay, which part? Being irreducible. Uh, I don't know, but there there are some more characteristics of um characteristics of the being irreducible. Uh, it's actually you are able to exclude some some small manners of it. Um, but um, can talk about it later on. But uh, I, I believe this for a solar case is much better than being just connected because that really means we want to exclude all of the matroid of cases, and that is why it is uh, complementary to being a matroid, uh, which makes this interesting. Yes. Do you have some any list of the miners in this your also on a pet conjecture? I mean, when you I mean or talk put original things just give us the, some small miners with and most seven, I don't know. Then. Yes, uh right. So this is a good question because if you um so if you are considering the past, the miners in the past, then there are only four miners. Those are on at most four elements. If you're talking about the decomposing large cycles into small cycles. Um, there are some, there is a partial list in Gideon Thesis um, of the x miners for regular matrix, and uh, for the non matrix cases, there are six of them. But we don't know yet if it is still an open problem, whether it is a complete list. But I imagine if, if we are able to uh, decompose it into small cycles, and we just examine those very small matrix one by one, and uh, we just collect all of the non regular cases, and those will be the uh, x miners. Oh, okay. I have a random silly question. So, um, do you know any like natural families where it's like quotes in there some kind of thing in or something? Um, do you know any like natural families? Like, can you give some like examples of natural families where you know those conjecture holds? Ah, so it holds. Um, I exam so many choice on almost five elements. Oh, okay. okay. So that is so that it's kind of hard to say find an operation where it's like does something sensible, right? Okay, so actually it maybe comes to how we may be able to prove the theorem. And the proof actually, um, at least in the major case, is actually some inductive proof based on the um, dimension of the some smallest thing that contains both X and Y. And that actually brings down to how uh, you want to increase the size of matrix. So that is, um, so the small, smaller the matrix is, it, it's, it's the easier it should be. So that is why I give them some smaller examples and they, at least so far it, it works. And although we have problem in this case, if we do contractor with a star, then that works. That is a fix of this problem. Does the fact that orthogonal matrix have foundations mean, for instance, that regular orthogonal matrix are the ones that are representable over F2 and F3? Yes, yes. Uh, it actually, uh, you do not have that fancy tools of conditions. Um, that is possible if you know this thing wrong. Um, although, in the foundation of a sample matrix, your pasture has four elements in, in the null set, which means you do not actually have the isomorphism of pastures, but um, there are some other input um, that makes it possible. So, it is, it is true that if uh, so matrix is regular if and only if it's over F2 and if it is binary and ternary, that is true. Okay, then let's thank the speaker again.